Hello, it's us again. Um, I was just going to go ahead and tell you that we're going to start on, or today is for Thursday, March 19th. So this is your second day of completing work. So you should see at the top corner, there's today's warm up. You need to go ahead and read it. I'll read it out loud and then you can start. Um, Kristen has 18 cups of soda. She wants to give each friend three cups. What expression represents how many friends Kristen F has? We are looking for what expression this word problem represents. How can we use an expression to represent this word problem? All right, two minutes starting now. So again, Kristen has 18 cups of soda. She wants to give each friend three cups. What expression represents how many friends Kristen F has? So F stands for Kristen's friends. Looking at your answer choices, writing it out, all of those things, you have a little bit less than two minutes to come up with your answer with work. Keep working. Making sure you have work to support your answer. If you don't see the answer you came up with, is there another strategy you could use to find the correct answer? It might not be wrong. And there's our time. All right, so if you read the first sentence, you see that Kristen has 18 cups of soda. So we know that she has 18 cups. So in our mind, we're thinking, okay, we know how many she has, that must be our total. total. So if 18 is our total, then she wants to give each friend three cups. My friends know that each may mean division or multiplication, but when we are given the total, we know that the problem we are going to be solving is division. So we know that she has 18 <coughs> and that each friend wants to have three. Let me write each friend has three cups. What expression represents how many friends Kristen F has? So we don't know how many friends there are. So to solve this problem, we know that we, if we have the total and we have each friend has three cups, we're going to do 18 divided by three equals F for friends. But wait. I don't see that, Miss Allen. It's not there. So that's when you need to use the wonderful Get Triangle. Get Triangle, which my hair chart's all the way over there, but we will be drawing it. Remember, G E T, divide, divide, multiply. If it is a division equation, we know that we label it T G E. Because when we divide, we always start with our total. Yeah, so I'm going to fill this in. So up here would be 18, G would be 3, and 
then times blank is what our friend is. So, do we see anything that looks familiar? This expression over here, any of these expressions that look familiar? So, if we looked at 18 plus 6 equals F, on that good triangle, is there any addition? No. no. So, that wouldn't make sense. F times 3 equals 18. Well, if we look here, we know that the E for the get triangle actually stood for F for friends, and that looks similar to it. And if we did this number, if we have a number here and here for working with that, we are multiplying to get our total. So, F times 3 equals 18. Could that work? Yeah. Let's put a thinking dot. 18 minus 3 equals F. Are we subtracting anywhere on this paper? No. On this board or on your paper? No. And then F divided by 3 equals 18. Well, yes, 18 is our total, and we do have 3 here. But I know that when I divide, I start with my total, and if my total is 18, and we already know that, did I start with my total here? I yes. did. It. So, the best answer for this problem would be B. Remember, when you just like when you add, when you multiply, you can do it in any order also. We have a preferred order, but you can do it in any order. Yes, so if we were to do this, 18 divided by 3, if we wanted to check our answer, we could do 3, 6, and we're skip counting all the way down to 18, 12, 6, 3, 6, 9, 12, 15, 18, that's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. That means that F would stand for 6. And we know 6 times 3 equals 18. 6, 12, 18. So our answer is B. All right, moving on to the next one. This is something that you sometimes see on your map test. This is not third grade level, but you know that we want to make sure that your brain is always thinking more advanced. So this is not the first time you've seen it. You've seen these a lot on your warm-up. You have 24 times 5 and 549 times 3. I'm going to give you three minutes to complete that, and then I'll come back. Go. If you need some assistance, you're doing the box method. Twenty seconds. Okay, so for twenty four times five, you should have broken up your box into two. Your five would go down here. The two stands for twenty. And the 4 is for just 4. So I'm going to do 5 times 20. That's 5 times 2, which equals 10. Add the 0. 20 times 5, 5 times 20 is 100. 5 times 4 is 20. So I should have gotten 120. Down here, you should have broken your box into thirds. And then you would have had the 3 here. The 500, the 5 stands for 500, the 4 stands for 
40, and the 9 is just 9. 3 times 5 is 15, add your zeros. 3 times 4 is 12, add your zero. And then 3 times 9 is 27. So then you would add up the numbers you got. And you should have gotten 1,647. Good work! Okay, so after your warm up, we are going to be learning about how you can estimate capacity by using the big G. Raise your hand if you've seen the big G before. Oh, wait, forgot no students. Ha ha. Okay, anyways. <laughs> All right, the big G, you will learn about it later, but that will help you with this lesson. So, what I want you to do right now is for the show what you know, it says if you want it to measure the length of a piece of paper, so the paper that you have right in front of you, if you want it to measure that, would you use a ruler? That's one foot. Or would you use a yardstick? And if you remember from yesterday's lesson, a yardstick is three rulers. Which one would you use? I'm giving you 10 seconds to think about the correct answer. Yardstick or a ruler to measure your paper? Miss Austin, what would you use? A ruler or a yardstick? To measure paper, I would use a ruler. Good job. But what if my paper was this big, Miss Allen? Oh, what true. if my paper was this big? Would I still use a ruler? Mm, that would take a lot of time. Maybe if I use a yardstick, that, wow, fits perfectly. So would Ooh. you use a ruler or a yardstick for a big piece of paper? A yardstick. So what you're about to do right now is to watch a little video of the big G to give you an understanding of what we are talking about. So pay close attention, it's only a minute long. Children. 
That is all within the gallon land. So what those are used for? The G for gallon land is stand for gallon. You may see that as if you go to the grocery store and you get a gallon of milk or a gallon of water. It's the really big jug. So that is what the G stands for. The Q is for a quart. And you may see that when you might need just a little bit of milk um, or you may see it some orange juice can be in a quart and then the P stands for a pint and that sometimes is seen when you get ice cream that's my best representation the size of a pint is kind of like your ice cream bin and then you have of course cups which you have this at home they're the smallest one so, if you see this, four quarts equals a gallon, two pints equals a quart, and two cups equals a pint. If you can re rememberize this gallon man or land, you will able to be able to tell how many quarts or how many pints are in the gallon land. So again, on your packet, if you flip over, it says Thursday, March 19th lesson. And you will see that there are a few examples of cup. Here's like a little milk carton that you see at school. And then there's a pint, which is a large glass or a large glass of milk. And then you have a quart, which is the larger milk container at the grocery store. And then you have a gallon, which you sometimes you milk or water in. All right, so when we think about estimating, guys, we are making a guess. We're making our best educated guess. It's not just like a willy-nilly, like, bah, I'm gonna guess whatever. You are making a guess based on what you know and what you've learned, all right? So what we are now asking to you to do and what the EOG could be asking you to do is make an estimate for the amount of water that fits inside of a kitchen sink. So if you wanna go look over at your kitchen sink, go ahead, take a, take a moment and do that. All right, and then think, would 20 feet, where's the rolling? Would 20, 20 feet, is. is that what I would use to fill up a uh, kitchen sink? Or would 20 pints? a little bit smaller than those um, quarts. Um, would 20 inches, so this little body benchmark of my thumb, or would 20 gallons, thinking of 20 things of milk, which of those would I put into my sink? Mm, well, I think I can automatically take out two options. I know that I don't measure how much liquid could go into a sink by using feet. I'm not going to use a ruler to measure liquid. I'm not going to use a ruler to measure water or milk or Coca-Cola or anything of a liquid substance. I'm also not going to use inches, if that's the case. Inches and um, feet are used to measure the length of something. If I'm talking about measuring the capacity, how much liquid can go into an object, I'm going to be looking at maybe pints or gallons. Those are the only two reasonable answers for you to choose. So now I want you to think, that big milk jug that I have at home, am I going to put 20 of those into my sink or will I put those little pints? And so maybe oh a pint size will be about the size of this cup well i put 20 of these fill it up with water and will that fill up my sink which do i think i feel like if i put 20 gallons in there if i fill up that big milk gallon that is going to be way too much i'm going to overflow my sink so the best estimate would be 20 pints. Now it might not be exact, but again, that is what the word estimate means. I'm making a guess based on what I know. And so there is a right and wrong answer for an estimate. Um, 
but it's not exact, okay? All right, now looking at our next slide, Victor was making himself some hot chocolate while he was sitting at home. Yeah. Mm. Mm -hmm. Look at all the toppings on there too. Oh, it's so good. Um, what unit will he use to measure? All right, so I've got A is half a pint. Half a pint. I've got B is half a ruler. I've got C is half a gallon. Miss Allen's gonna get a gallon. And Miss Allen's got a gallon, so uh, she's gonna bring that right on back to us. Um, or I've got D, which is half a pound, which I don't even know what pounds are yet, so we haven't even learned that. Um, there are two things that I can automatically take out, and the first one would be pint. No, ruler, right? I hope you decided ruler also. The next one would be pound because we haven't even learned to measure with pounds right now, so that would be something else that we would um, eliminate as an answer choice because when I'm measuring capacity, when I'm measuring liquid, we discussed, we use gallons, quarts, pints, or the little baby cups, all right? So, um, I'm between half a pint or half a gallon. Here is a gallon. Am I going to use half of this to make a cup of hot chocolate? Or here would be half a pint. So take this and half it. So which of those makes the most sense? I think if I used half of that, Miss Allen, I'd be running to the bathroom a lot because that's going to be a big cup of hot chocolate. Yes, yeah, so that right? would be a stomach ache. So half a gallon does not make sense. The only answer choice that makes sense is half a pint. Miss Flint, I'm going to explain to them. I just found some props that might help you. So this okay. is what I'm thinking. As a cup, if you have a measuring cup at home, if you fill this up and dump it in there, it's about the same. So this is equivalent to a cup. They're right here. This is what we're using for pint. And then your big Germex hand sanitizer bottle would be equivalent to a quart. And then of course, you have your gallon. So these will help maybe give you a little visual of exactly what the sizes are. So cup, pint, quart, and then the big gallon. All right, so we are looking at our jar of mayonnaise, guys. Ooh, yum. Yeah, can't wait to put some of that um, on my food. Not really, I don't like mayonnaise, but that's okay. Um, what unit of measurement, so again, I'm measuring um, a, what I use to measure a jar of mayonnaise, all right? So mayonnaise isn't really a liquid, but the substance material is kind of liquidy, and I can use it with to measure, I can use these things to measure it. Um, I can use gallons, pints, quarts, and cups to measure it. Now the question is, what would be the most appropriate, what would be the best use of my with best unit of measuring. So, thinking about A, one ounce, B, one ruler, C, one inch, and D, one pint. I hope that you at home have already learned that we can eliminate two answer choices. Which two answer choices do you think right now, and go ahead and do it on your paper, that you can eliminate if we are trying to measure how much Mayonnaise is in this jar, all right? Not measuring its length, so I can eliminate a ruler, because that's what I use to measure length. I can also eliminate an inch, because I use an inch to measure length, all right? So I'm down to an ounce and a pint. And an ounce we did not talk about, but an ounce is even smaller than the cups. An ounce is a, basically, if you were measuring inside, it would be maybe down here, or if you imagine a paper clip, that's how much an ounce kind of weighs. So you haven't learned about ounces yet, but you will. 
So on the ENFG, you will have questions like this. So when you do know it, you'll be able to say, oh, I know what an ounce is. That's so small, and it's a paper clip. So mm -hmm. our best answer would be D. One pint would be the best use of measurement for a jar of mayonnaise. All right. All right, so with that being said, you are now going to be on this part of your packet right here. And it is, says Thursday, March 19th practice. You need to complete one through nine. You need to record your work on this sheet of paper, as well as going to your Google Classroom, where we showed you earlier. Go to your Google Classroom under the classwork and look for 319 math practice. It will be estimating capacity. So. On my Google Classroom, I'm in the third grade virtual learning, and I'm going to go to classwork, and we have a lot because we have lots of different ones up here, so I'm going to scroll down to find the one you're going to have. You won't have as many right now. Yours will literally say right here, 319 capacity. So when you see that, you're going to click on it. And look, cereal bowl, which matches up with what your practice looks like, and you choose. Did I say that was about a gallon, one pint, one pound, or one ounce? And again, hopefully you can go ahead and eliminate one of those that we haven't learned about today. And you keep on going for all of them, and they match up with what's on your paper. And then make sure you're hitting the submit button at the bottom.